Today, we are discovering what secrets Survivor Pearl Islands did not tell us in the edited television show. What is great is how the official DVD and Blu-ray releases of each season of Survivor contain some secrets that are game related, some that are personal thoughts, and some that are just plain silly. And we will even find out the truth about the Outcast twist and how it was conceived and more importantly, when it was conceived. Basically, as long as it isn't part of the show that aired on TV, it is fair game to be considered a secret. While most of the secrets here are focused on season seven Pearl Islands, some of them do apply to Survivor as a whole. So with that, I wanna thank you for watching what I make and ultimately supporting what I do here with liking, commenting, and sharing. If you wanna watch the videos I make early and even pick what videos I make, then join me on Patreon. For only a few bucks a month, you can help support this channel and do those things I just mentioned. Thank you for your support. To be clear, there is so much good stuff locked away in these extra features, and it's a lot, and to feature every single thing will be far too much for just one video. So I do recommend you watching them in full for yourself. However, this list contains the secrets that I personally found to be the most interesting. So with that, let's count all 41 of them in absolutely no particular order. 39 days, 16 people, one survivor. Number one, TV promos play a big part of shaping the narrative of a season when it airs. In modern Survivor, we don't see things sensationalized as much, but back in the earlier days, it really is a big part of how players are seen by the general audience. Heck, Rupert was a great character that was generally heroic in Pearl Islands, but TV promos like the one that I'm about to show you really shape that narrative further while painting others in a negative light. Rupert is America's favorite castaway, but his own tribe is taunting him. The pretty boy jock idiots all gotta pick on me. How much will he take? I'll snap your neck like a damn chicken! Number two, another sensationalized thing that happened in earlier TV promos for Survivor was acting like, oh man, this week's episode is going to be so insane, you won't believe it. Like, what we're about to show you can't be on television. Like, if you watch the Marquesas Secrets video I made, you'll see how they uh, sensationalized the skulls and acted like, oh no, they ran across some dead bodies, and they might have, but it wasn't as big of a deal as the ad made it out to be. And they do that again here, but this time, it's with Austin struggling to swim in a challenge. A life and death situation. Above the ground! Hold on to the rope! <gasps> we'll leave you breathless. I need help! Austin's in trouble! Help! Don't miss an all new survivor. Number three. The first great twist of Pearl Islands is everyone starting the game unexpectedly with the clothes on their backs and none of their bags. This really hurt people like Krista and Sandra who spent way more than I could have imagined for the clothes and items that they brought. I was upset because I had put like $700 on my credit card. Uh, just so I could be prepared, I had like a different outfit I could match with something else. Like I carefully thought out and then $700 that stay on the boat and then we're stuck with the same underwear, same drawers. I was like, had I known, I would have maybe put on a bathing suit. I mean, I spent like 500 bucks. All this fancy stuff, new sunglasses, new shoes, like these water socks. I thought I had it made. 10 pairs of underwear. <laughs> Number four. Who can forget the time that Rupert sold the other tribe's shoes and sold them? It is a watershed moment for the show that even the most casual fan remembers when you just say, who is Rupert? However, what we weren't told on the show is how he accidentally also sold the shoes of his own tri-mates as well. Ah, oh, that changes things a little bit. Yeah, but in your confusion, you sold my shoes for a pineapple. I'm so sorry. Oh, that pineapple was I didn't know good, what though. the heck I had in there. I just knew I had to get him and get out of there. <laughs> Come on. My that shoes, those are so my good. shoes. Here they are, Rupert. <laughs> I didn't know whose shoes I was selling. Those were my, those were my favorite <sighs> shoes, too. I stole those from my roommate in college because I liked them so much. I'm so mad. I wish I had them still. Number five. The show never addresses this so it isn't clear. What did the Morgan tribe think happened to their shoes? Did they think they lost them? Did they think some local stole them? Did they even know that the Drake tribe had anything to do with it? Well, as it turns out... It was so funny at the finale when we're sitting down because the Morgans didn't know I stole their shoes until the end when we were watching it on the finale and Andrew hits me saying, you know those darn insoles were $300? <laughs> he got mad at me! Number six. When the Morgan tribe got naked in the very first immunity challenge so Austin wouldn't feel bad about his underwear not staying on, it was quite memorable. Sandra made a funny comment. The editing had a laugh in us at home were giggling about naked butts. It was a grand old time for everyone, except for one person, and I'm a bit surprised by which person this is. We, we get naked, we lose by one foot. It's ridiculous. So we go to tribal. 
Mark Burnett is there. He comes over to me. He said, Savage, you're the leader of the tribe, right? I said, yes. Yes, sir. And he said, getting naked in the first episode, that's really aggressive and you created some great trauma. I said, oh, well, thank you. And he said, don't effing ever do that again. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and he, and, and Rob, he, he was about one. I believe one, it. I believe he, it. He was about one inch from my nose. And I said, Trust me, sir, we'll never do that again. Number seven. We all know that the challenges in the show last much longer than what is shown on television. They have to edit it down to make it so we can actually see all the important events, but not have to watch every single thing. If they showed the uncut challenges, it would be like watching Survivor Mexico. And uh, if you haven't seen that show, it is full of long challenges. In fact, the previous season for Survivor Mexico had 74 episodes and it lasted, I believe, over 130 days. What? Anyways, the cannon challenge in episode one lasted much longer than even I would have guessed. And that challenge took forever. Oh my gosh, people don't believe that. I mean, we, we had to be pushing that sucker for an hour. Forever, it was endless. Number eight, what if Drake had gone to tribal council first instead of Morgan? Would it have changed the game? Who would have been voted out first? We know Nicole Delmo would have been safe, but who on Drake would have been voted out first? Well, if we had gone to tribal council you would have been number one to i go. know and i was told Just that a bunch of times we had it bonded at that point for you know at least the first three days i mean we had i would have been the first one to go no, no me oh, but exactly. me and rupert had a a, a pinky swear we because did. we both had cuts and although and you're not we supposed to do that sister, we <laughs> put our blood together and our blood runs in each other right now number nine the infamous grandma lie that fair play pulled off that tricked others into giving him the reward challenge an instant classic for the show however many have wondered if production knew the whole time if he was lying or did they really believe him well here is an interview fair play did with the show before they filmed anything. I did think about the possibility of that working against me, not choosing a quote unquote loved one and choosing a friend. So I, I've already uh, pre-programmed him to when he comes to tell me that my Grammy died. Number 10. Lil, the Boy Scout Scoutmaster was the surprise runner up for the season. As someone of an advanced age, you may see her as a grandma character for the show. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is a side of Lil I never thought I would see until, uh, well, until she did it in this interview. And now I'm I'm a little creeped out. And just because I'm a scoutmaster, that does not mean that I don't like my short dress and my spiked heels and my Victoria's Secret push-up bras. <laughs> Number 11, the truth shall set you free. That is how I feel with this secret in particular, as the outcast twist has been a bit muddled in terms of how much they helped the players when they got voted out of the game. I've heard so many various reports from people who actually were outcast to production. It's it's not very clear. Rumors floated around that they slept in tents. Others claim that they really did get minimal to eat, but it was more than those who were on the island. It's not super clear. Well, here's Jeff Probst in 2020 with nothing to lose by talking about this, explaining exactly how it was created and what happened. Uh, there's a couple that we did that, uh, there's two that we did that I didn't like. <laughs> I'm realizing how this is going to sound. They were neither of them were really ideas I wanted to do or my ideas. They were both marks. But um, but one was we did this thing where we brought back people. We called them the outcasts and we voted people out. They went and went to a hotel and ate and had a shower. And then Mark said, we should just bring them back. That would blow their minds. And all of us were like, but that's fundamentally wrong. And we did it, it was criticized, and I've said, like, man, I, I'm no genius. I didn't think it was a good idea. Number 12, how much did the outcasts know? After all, they got food, they got some rest, and they got a nice shower, much more than a lot of the players in the game got. But what were they told when they were sent back to compete in the game? Well, according to Burton. So at this point, we're hiding in the bushes, and I, my adrenaline's never gone through the roof oh, more. Yeah, and because we, we still didn't know what it was for. Of course, you got a chance to come back. We didn't know that. I just wanted to play a challenge. Okay. This is the first addition, time we heard this too, because a lot of people ask that. We had no idea what it was for. So this is where reality set in, and it blew my mind. Number 13. Austin may have quit the game, but the dude was sicker than the show let us know. Now this number has varied in the multiple interviews I have listened to, but the general consensus is that Austin had multiple staph infections that had him losing a whopping two pounds a day. Now if OT did have the staph infections, to a certain degree, you can't do anything about that, but a lot of it is. That's, that's fair, and let's be clear. He did have five staph infections. He went to his doctor when he got back to Boston, and his doctor indicated it was very serious, and and it needed uh, 
serious medical attention. So I totally understand why he quit. I don't agree with it. I would never do it, never crossed my mind, but I understand why he did it. Number 14, back to the outcast. After they won the challenge, I wondered, were they allowed to talk to each other and strategize? Were they allowed to pitch to each other, hey, vote for me, don't vote for them. If I get back in the game, I'll do this. Like outside of what we saw at Tribal Council. On the show, it just shows them winning the challenge and then we don't see them do anything until that Tribal Council. But is that actually what happened? So we, we weren't allowed to talk to each other before we got to Tribal Council. So no alliances, no way to figure out anything. And I'll actually make some comments after we vote because it was interesting some of the way people or some of the reasoning people gave for how they voted. Just ridiculous. Number 15. How the heck did Lil of all of the outcasts get voted back into the game? I think we all understand how Burton got enough votes, but Lil? Was it a joke? Am I taking crazy pills? Did she really endear herself to the others somehow in some way that we never saw? Well, as it turns out, Nicole and Michelle hated Lil so much, That's they both wrote that. her name down because they didn't want her to ruin their vacation. No. So basically, Michelle and Nicole didn't want to go back in the game. They just no, wanted no. to go what, on vacation. What Nicole, and they showed it on the on the outtakes, Nicole holds up Lil's card and says, Lil, I'm voting for you because I can't stand you. I know I'm not going back in the game and I don't want to travel with you. So I want to be as far from you as possible. So I hope you go back in. Wow. Yeah, and so later I said- and, and Michelle did the same thing. <clears throat> That's brutal. Number 16, when Burton won that immunity challenge at the merge, he didn't need it. So we saw him give it to Rupert and it didn't seem like anyone else tried to convince him to do anything else than give it to Rupert. Apparently that is not the case as there was someone vying to get this immunity from Burton, but Burton basically said, no, I'm not doing it. I felt so bad. You're like, you know, if, if you're looking to give that away, I know someone that could use it. I was like, yeah, so we, we get in the boat going to tribal and I'm, I'm talking to Burton. I'm saying, Burton, let's not forget that you were the first one voter out of the Drake tribe. Can you honestly trust the Drakes? And I know someone, if you really want to get back at the Drakes, it could truly use immunity because at that point I had a I pretty so clear bad. indication that the Drakes were coming after me. And I said, Burton, give it to me. And he was having nothing, nothing of it. Number 17. Okay, so Rupert stole the shoes of the Morgan tribe and sold them. He somehow also sold some of his own tribe's shoes as well, and I don't think I can move past that in my life now. Despite his whole pirate's pillage, pirate steal speech in episode one, what was he really thinking when he did this? What was Rupert the man, not the TV character, but the man, thinking when he did it. I couldn't believe it. I looked around. I mean, it's the first few minutes of the game. I didn't really understand the game. I couldn't let an opportunity like that pass me by. So I'm looking around and I'm trying to hide it even from the camera guys that I'm gonna steal all their stuff. When I saw the other tribe coming around, I had them all hidden. The insoles, the little girly shoes. I don't know how I ended up with mismatched shoes. I was trying to give them away too quick. I gave them all the little Johnny Rotten. And he, he brought back supplies too. Number 18. Some people get recruited onto Survivor and never really have to try to get on, like fair play. Some apply for years and years and years and never get on, like me. And some apply, get cast as an alternate and have to wait quite a few seasons before they're finally selected. In this case, that is... I didn't really like the show. I watched a couple of the episodes and I thought, that's the stupidest thing that anybody could possibly do. But you get hooked on it, you start watching it. And then I was just like, I gotta do this. So I applied, I believe I was an alternate for three, and then they were telling me five and six. So I was a big fan of it. Number 19. This next one is actually playing out right in front of your eyes as I speak. On the very first challenge, only Fairplay and Sean got to walk through the whole thing to see what was coming before they actually did the challenge. And what is cool is we see how many production members are present for just this part, not counting the cameraman who's also shooting what we're looking at. Number 20. We all know Danny Bowright as the stealth bomber in Guatemala. She did call herself that after all. But strangely enough, in this DVD bonus feature that had to have been recorded prior to the Guatemala finale, based on all the information I could find online, Krista calls someone else a stealth bomber too. Coincidence? Sander was the master planner. Uh, hey, I didn't realize what a good game player Sandra was until I watched it on TV. I'm too stealth. I know. <laughs> stealth <I> know. bomber, <laughs> Sandra. <laughs> Number 21. There have been a few people from the season to return to play again. Andrew Savage, Fair Play, Rupert, and of course, Sandra. But is there someone else this season that would have been fun for a second time? I think so, and uh, she wants to play again too. I found where the shark was hunting a day before I get voted off. You know, I want my chance. Look at, look, you got to go back for All Stars. 
Sander won. <laughs> Out of us three, I deserve my next chance, don't I? <laughs> Number 22. Here's an interesting take that I don't quite see myself, but uh, Rupert swears up and down that it happened. In episode 10, him and Fairplay are teamed up on the reward challenge and flat out, Rupert claims Fairplay was purposely doing things to throw it so Rupert would lose. This one, we I got stuck with little Johnny Rotten in this. And at the end of it, when we're putting the puzzle back together, he's sabotaging me. I, I don't know if they show it or not, but I would be laying the puzzle pieces out. He would flip them back over upside down so we couldn't see him and mix them back up. Every, you know. I did not know. Oh, yeah, watch this. He sabotaged it so we wouldn't win. He didn't worry about winning. He just wanted to make sure I didn't win. Number 23, this next secret is just plain silly. But sometimes those are my favorite secrets. As the commentary on episode 10 is wrapping up, everyone is signing off and usually this is a big bag of nothing. You just kind of skip over it. But Sandra totally botches what she's trying to say and it's pretty funny. This is Sandra. I hope you enjoyed all the insight. Um, how do you say that? All the all the inside scoop on uh, behind the scenes stuff. This is Sandra, and I hope you enjoyed the inside scoop on all the behind stuff. <laughs> the inside, <laughs> the right? inside scoop. What did I say wrong? You said inside all the behind instead stuff. of inside. This is Sandra, and I hope you. What? Here, let me help you. This is Sandra, and I hope you enjoyed the inside scoop. No, I, this is Sandra, and I hope you enjoy the inside <laughs> scoop of everything that went down, and there's more to come. Number 24. The infamous Grandma Lie has gone down in history, and Survivor knew they had a gem of an episode on their hand before it ever aired on TV. So how exactly did they build the hype to this glorious masterpiece. Before the hour's over, one of these castaways will commit the single worst act of deception in Survivor history. Who is it? Number 25. After that grandma lie, fair play is pure evil in the eyes of the show and most of the general audience. And now even in the TV ads, this next one not only paints him as pure evil, but via the imagery used, implies that one of the remaining castaways will take a gun and shoot him. What? He calls himself Johnny Fairplay, but little Johnny doesn't play fair, even lying about his grandmother's death. Now will someone finally take him down? Number 26. When it comes to fair play, you would imagine his crowning achievement for the season was the infamous grandma lie. After all, it put him on the map and made us never forget him. However, for him personally, there is one other thing he did in the game that means even more. When uh, Rupert was sitting there on the island, talking to his wife. His wife was actually in Panama. It was the best part of all of it. He's like, I know you can hear me. And for me to vote him out the day before he had a chance to see her meant more to me than the grandma lie. <laughs> <laughs> Number 27. Okay, so we know Fairplay told Thunder D to come into the game ready to pull off this grandma lie, and we saw that it worked despite some bad acting on Thunder D's part. Since Fairplay was recruited onto the season, he only had so much time to prep and make up this trick. So, how did he come up with it? One month, like, uh, I had never seen Survivor before I was cast. I watched every episode, I ordered every episode on eBay and every early show interview in which they said why they felt they were voted off. I watched every season twice except for Amazon. I watched three times because Rob Cicerino showed me that you could flip-flop on alliances. So every season I watched, whenever I watched the Loved Ones Challenge, I was in tears. I'm like, I, like I'm just like, I hate you, Mark Burnett. Like, I mean, like I cried every single loved one. Like Jenna Maraska, like you know, they, they, everyone, you know, basically like let her get the letter from her mom. I'm like, well, well, what, what is more emotional than a dying mom, a dead grandma? So uh, day two, everyone's like, who's your loved one? I was like, mine's my grandma. She's the greatest woman in the world. I love her more than anything. And I was like, but I hate CBS because they made me list a backup. My backup is my best friend, Thunder D. So every night, like, people used to pray for my grandma, and I'm just dying laughing. So that's <laughs> number 28. This next one I find a bit hard to believe, and I think you will agree. Kind of like Coach and Token Chains, sometimes I don't know where Fairplay's lying begins and where it ends, as he claims that on the beach with Thunder D, he cried for six hours. And no, he's not joking. Actually, Terrific. uh, right after this, I, uh, I completely lose it. I, uh, I go into tears and like I, I pretty much just go crazy right there. No, I lost it. I mean, like, I, I, I probably cried for six hours straight. Why? I, uh, like, 
withdrawals. Emotionally, it was just too much for me. Number 29, some see Rupert as a hero and some see him as a villain. I can understand the case for both though, as I personally lean more towards him being a hero, but he definitely has villainous traits. Well, for Burton and Fairplay, they think Rupert was way worse than what we think about him with how he treated everything and everyone in the game. The only thing an individual has in that game is what they wore into the, into the game, their clothes. Everything else, the things we bought in the village were all the tribes, the things that we won were all the tribes. But Rupert, while he helped the tribe out a lot and everything, he was very self-centered. He would say, this is my spear. He would say, this is my island. This is my this, this is my sewing machine. And he, he wasn't very good at sharing. And when things were going well, he was all happy and everything. But when people lost or when John voted against him, Rupert went crazy. Rupert saw the game as my island, my spear, my hammock, my adventure. My, like, uh, no, he, d he didn't get the game. When they voted me off, I was ready to kill them. Number 30. Remember when Fairplay voted for Rupert and then Rupert flipped out? Oh man, it's about as close to a physical altercation we have gotten on the show, aside from Bobby, John, and Jamie. Apparently, Rupert really wanted to hurt Fairplay, which I think is kind of obvious, and heck, here's the bit. Fairplay was baiting him so Rupert would be kicked out of the game. John was trying to get me to hit him. I don't hit, I don't do, I don't even get that mad. John got me mad. And I laid hands on his shoulders and just gave him the little, you know, where you try and bring your fingers together, like I do on my kids. Sometimes you just get that little twinge and it snaps him back a little bit. As soon as I laid my hands on John, he's looking around for somebody to say, he's hurting me, he's hurting me. I wanted to kill that guy. Number 31. After the dead grandma reward challenge, everyone except Fairplay was sent to an abandoned beach. Now Burton says in the commentary that they just sat there and didn't do any work, which is why we saw nothing about it in the episode aside from when they just landed there. But Sandra says she was spending the time trying to tell everyone that Fairplay was tricking them, but they wouldn't listen to her. When we got sent to that deserted island and I told them, you know, your loved ones took a plunge in the ocean for no reason because John is lying. They're like, you know, why can't you set the game aside for one minute? Don't you see he's hurt? hurting right now everything to you guys is survivor he's a human being with feelings and i'm thinking you know he said his grandma raised him he's the devil she's got to be the devil who cares she's in hell now good for her good for us good for the world honestly we did not care about john and his dead grandma Number 32, if you read the faces of those present when the dead grandma lie happens, it really only seems like Sandra and Krista are not buying what is being sold, and I don't blame them based on Fairplay's track record. But why exactly are they not buying what they're seeing? As it turns out, this trick had been a long time coming, as we know, but it's mostly for them because Fairplay couldn't keep his mouth shut about it. Being on the same tribe as John for so long, you know, you get used to hearing the same old story. And he had talked about his grandma the whole time. Like, oh, if we ever have the family reward visit, then my grandma will come out. And when somebody mentions that, like, 500 times and then he says oh if she doesn't show up i know something happened it was like he was trying to prepare us the whole game for it like he knew that it was gonna happen number 33 okay so there's a bonus feature on the dvd called game strategies and it features interviews of players before the game happens with them talking about what strategies they plan on doing when they get in there simple enough however the person who edited this thing just eviscerates everyone except maybe sandra and rupert by contradicting what everyone says with clips from the show not but a second after they say what they say. It hurts to watch, and yet it's slightly funny. Here are three examples, those being Sean, Austin, and Krista. You know, I tend to get along well with women. Sean is the biggest puss I have ever met in my entire life. Maybe Sean should get a clue. It's easier, you know, to bow out of something than to, to buckle down and work your ass off to get better at something you're not good at. You take it for whatever you want. I mean, if you want to say quitting, you want to say stopping, yeah, I'm quitting. Getting along with men is definitely easier for me. You're the That's only exactly one, you're the only one that could have done it. That's the point. I didn't do it. Number 34, Lil made some smart moves in the game to get to the end. She basically single-handedly ended all of Morgan's and Fairplay's game, which is still funny to me to this day. But in the commentary track for episode 11, Burton claims to have driven a lot of what Lil did on a day-to-day -day basis as she didn't know what to do. Every morning I'd wake up and say, Lil, today, go talk to Krista. Tell her you don't trust me. Ask her what she's thinking, who she wants to vote out next. Right, because she would she come back and game. say, okay, I did that. What should I do now? I'd say, now go talk to John. Make sure John and I are still in a tight alliance. Make sure he, uh, he and you are very close and tight. And then come back and tell me what happens. Every single day. And before tribal council, 
didn't matter if it was five minutes before, an hour before, I'd be like, well, here, here's who here, here right. is who we're voting for. Right. She'd be like, okay, I don't understand why, but I'll vote for it. Yeah. And no. she did every single thing I ever asked her to do. Number 35. Remember when Burton won immunity on the word search immunity challenge, but then as soon as everyone started to leave the challenge, he was stripped of it for misspelling the word liaison. It's a bit wild and the TV promo has fun with this happening, but more interesting to me is what exactly took place in real time when it did happen. So <laughs> after that production, five people approved my board. Or it was the fifth person that- No, 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 it was the it. French cameraman exposed you. And he goes, <laughs> this is wrong, I, what do you use? This it's is because a Burton's a Republican. <laughs> Yes, that's true. <laughs> I don't I don't like the French spelling of words, that's for sure. <laughs> Number 36. This next secret is a fair play story of something happening with no one to cross check it, so keep that in mind. Essentially getting Tawana to vote out Krista was easy when fair play was causing mayhem and blaming it on Krista. I, I told Tawana that, that Krista hit the lighters. So when Krista comes back to camp, uh, Tawana's like, where are the lighters? And uh, she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, that's it, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Johnny, you're a liar. Number 37. Does Fairplay beat Lil or Sandra in a final two? No, I legitimately want to know, and I hope that you comment below and tell me what you think. Frankly, he thinks he does, and I don't know about that. He did message me on Instagram to make sure I knew he thought he would, and here's the screenshot of that, and he even says it again on the commentary for the DVD. But let's be real, think about this. Tawana already voted for Lil over Sandra. And then if you have Rupert, Kristen, Sandra all in the jury with having to pick between Lil and Fairplay, who are they all mad at the most? All I'm saying is, he could have easily have lost four to three. Burton versus Lil would have been <laughs> seven zero. Me versus Lil would have been uh, uh, five two. Who who would have voted for her? Uh, Rupert Seems and uh, uh, no, Sandra. Rupert, Rupert and Sandra. <laughs> yeah. Number 38. I am not even sure what to make of this, as Dara says she is extremely proud of her teeth, and I don't know, maybe she's a dentist or something. And once again, the editor is so brutal as they find this obscure shot of her eating food and they slow it down as much as they possibly can to make her look silly. And my teeth are like my pride, I guess she'd say. <laughs> Number 39. In an interview, Savage did after Pearl Islands, but before Second Chances, he talks about the Outcast twist and what he really thinks. If you have ever heard him talk about the Outcast twist, long story short, he basically says it's unfair because they didn't know it was going to happen. And it really killed the momentum the Morgan tribe had going into the merge. But how would Savage compare it to something like Redemption Island? Do you find Redemption Island as offensive as what happened with the outcasts? No, I don't. I think Redemption Island is an interesting twist uh, in the game. And, and it's largely because, you know, it's there. You're told beforehand. If we were told beforehand that, look, when you're going to vote somebody out, they're going to form a tribe called the outcast uh, tribe and they're going to get a chance to get back in the game if they kick your butt in a, at, at, at a challenge. That's completely different. Transparency. Number 40. When Lil is voted out and she returns back to the game, she mentions that Savage never told her that she was going home after he promised he would. That is what the editing of the season wants us to believe as well. But according to Andrew Savage, this is not true. It's fake news. And this is absolutely true. And it's true because Lil has admitted this in all of her exit interviews. So what happened when we're packing up to go to tribal council is Lil who tended to the fire. She was great work ethic around camp. She put a bunch of firewood under this tree and said, Savage, I know I'm going home and I put the firewood over here. So if it rains, which it did every night, it won't get wet. And when you come back from tribal, you can you can start a fire. I hugged her. I said, Lil, thank you so much. Very thoughtful. I said, this is not personal. I have to go with my alliance. Personally, I did not want to vote you out, but I got to go with the numbers in my alliance. And then you see the scene uh, where she votes me out. And, she, and I said, will you let me know? And she says, remember when I asked you to let me know? When she said that to me, I, I, in my mind, I was going, have you lost your mind? We had that whole conversation on the island. And then the camera cuts away from me where it doesn't capture where I'm like, well, what, you know, what are you talking about? I told you you're going home. You knew you were going home. Number 41, Ryan S. AKA Skinny Ryan never wanted to be called that and hated the name. Now he never said anything in the game to anyone about this nickname, but afterwards, after Savage is voted out, he goes up to him and tells him, hey, I didn't like that you called me that. Savage says, hey, I had no idea. If you had told me, we would have stopped and picked you a totally different name. Keep in mind though, that while Andrew Savage is telling the story, he is still calling Ryan S. Skinny Ryan. 
So uh, I, I guess Savage doesn't really care. I'm not sure. Yeah, and the one, the one thing that he told me, Skinny Ryan told me after I was voted out, he said, Savage, you know, because we had two Ryans on our tribe. So I called one Skinny Ryan, the other one's Rhino for Ryan Opre. Right. And afterwards, like a week after I was voted out, he came up to me and he said, you know, Savage, I, re I, I really am offended by the, the nickname Skinny Ryan. I'm oh. just kind of, I'm kind of sensitive to that. And I said, dude, why didn't you tell me on day one? I never would have called you Skinny Ryan. We'd come up with some other name. But I said it, I called him Skinny Ryan the whole time and he never told me. So which secret blew your mind the most? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching. And if you like the content you see here, then please consider supporting me and this channel on Patreon. Your financial support makes this all possible. So thank you and thank you for watching.